Hi, my name is Diane Harper, and I'm a family physician who does a lot of research. My particular area is in women's health research, um, and I am particularly interested in ways of being able to screen for cervical cancer that doesn't require the speculum exam. I haven't yet found a woman who looks forward to that examination on any kind of routine basis. And we now have primary HPV screening, which allows us to be able to have the woman self-sample um, and be able to, to appropriately and much more accurately find cervical cancer. So I'd like to introduce you to my teammates. Uh, these are my three amazing research associates who help with all of the research and they're gonna tell you a little bit more about our projects. So I'll start with Christelle. Hello, I am Christelle Okori, a Family Medicine International graduate. I had the privilege to join Dr. Harper's lab a few months ago and our research focuses on the use of the HPV self-sampling uh, and home-based screening techniques. I'm coordinating a study that aims to test the concordance of self-collected uh, samples with physician-collected samples for HPV screening. And we are currently in the process of recruiting patients across Michigan medicine clinics. Great, great. And then Martha. Hi, so I'm Martha Alvish, and I came to Dr. Harper's lab from the School of Public Health when I was a student there. Um, and sort of building off of the study that Christelle is helping to run, um, for the sort of second phase, we are looking at, um, you know, if you can use primary HPV screening to look for cervical cancer, um, rather than having to rely on a pap smear, um, it kind of opens the door for new screening methods, um, self-sampling, and possibly home screening. So um, we're looking to see, you know, what patients think about being able to screen for cervical cancer at home. So providing either a urine sample or a vaginal swab sample, being sent a kit to collect that at home, and then sending it back through the mail for testing. Um, and specifically, we're just looking to see, you know, is this something that's acceptable to patients? Is this something that's going to help reach um, under screen populations. This is going to make cervical cancer screening a little bit more inclusive because, you know, for a variety of reasons, not everyone makes it into the clinic. And for a variety of reasons, not everyone is comfortable with the kind of exam that's required for a pap smear. Um, so with this uh, study, we're really looking to work with different communities across the state. Um, you know, work with community partners, get connected to um, patients and see what, what they think about this new method for cervical cancer screening that hopefully will become clinical reality someday. Great. Thanks, Martha. Elizabeth. I am Elizabeth Haro. Um, I joined the Harper Lab about a year ago after working with the State Health Department um, in a breast and cervical cancer screening program. So it's been great to join the Harper Lab and see how we can take these innovative ideas um, for cervical cancer research and push them forward into translational research. Um, some of the community partners that we're working with for these studies are MidMichigan, um, and Michigan focuses or focuses working with women who are in rural areas across the state of Michigan. We're also working with the MENA population, the Middle Eastern North African population in partnership with ACCESS um, and in the Dearborn area. And then our last community partner is with Hamilton um, and trying to reach the Black and African American community out in Flint. Um, so we really hope to have a, 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 a diverse um, experience and um, seeing what women across Michigan, across different communities really think about these home sampling um, methods for cervical cancer screening. That's great. So thank you students for listening. If you're interested in more information, you know how to get a hold of us. Um, and we hope you have a great family medicine rotation. Thank you. Bye-bye. 
Hi everybody, my name is Justine Wu. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Family Medicine. I have been here for five years and I moved my entire family from the East Coast so that I could join the research department here. The things I focus on are family planning and contraception and how to support contraceptive decision needs among people with special circumstances such as chronic medical conditions, disabilities, or breast cancer survivors. But what I really love about being here is the camaraderie and the support that I get for carrying out my research program. It's one of the reasons why we left the East Coast where all of my family is in order to join this incredibly supportive and thriving research community. I do see patients one day a week and I love the ability to go from the fast pace of clinical care to the slow, deep thinking of research. So please do ask your questions about what it's like to be a family medicine researcher or clinician. There are many of us available to answer your questions. Thank you. I'm Mike Fetters, and I'm faculty in family medicine in, in the research group. I joined uh, and started doing family medicine research because I had extensive cross-cultural experiences. So I had been an exchange student to Japan when I was in high school and then in college again. And over 25 years ago, I started the Japanese Family Health Program here at the University of Michigan. So that really gave me a strong interest in cross-cultural issues and also in qualitative research. But I also did a master's degree in preventive services as a master of public health. And so I was very interested as well in quantitative research. So those two areas led me to have a natural interest in mixed methods research. What that means is I use both qualitative research and quantitative research in virtually all the projects that I do right now. Many of them are cross-cultural, but many of them are unrelated. I currently serve as the director of the Mixed Methods Family Medicine Program here at the University of Michigan. I'm also the co-editor-in-chief of the journal Mixed Methods Research, which is the flagship journal of mixed method research in the world, actually. My biggest passion actually is working with junior faculty and residents, uh, medical students with their first research projects. I really get a kick out of seeing the light bulbs go off as people do projects. Thank you for your interest. Hello, I am Golfo Zilos Marnet. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Family Medicine. I am also a clinical psychologist and I am one of three clinical psychologists in our department. Um, I practice at the Ypsilanti Health Center, and it is wonderful to get to be integrated into primary care and to work with such an interdisciplinary team, such as our department. Um, this rest of the week, I spend working on my research. My study team and I are currently conducting two trials where we are testing a computer-delivered brief intervention to reduce risk behavior, including alcohol and drug use during pregnancy and the postpartum period. And I am very grateful to get to be in a department where I can um, focus my time on my two passions of clinical work and um, clinical research. Hi. I'm Philip Dadov. I'm chair of the Department of Family Medicine at Michigan. Being deaf, I understand the difficulty people with hearing loss have in society. There are 17 million Americans who have a hearing loss. As a family physician, I began to see some of the inequities these people had with their health care and began to study this group. Over the years, We've done work on establishing the poor health outcomes, the lack of knowledge about prevention, and ways to better identify and refer at-risk patients for hearing loss. Through the research of our team, we have highlighted the problem people with hearing loss have nationally. We have incented numerous physicians around the country to also become involved in this effort and have identified ways to improve the health of this population. Our research has made a difference in this group of people, and that feels really good. Hello, 
Hello, I'm Dr. Susie Zick. I'm a research associate professor here in the Department of Family Medicine, and I'm also the co-director of the Integrative Family Medicine Program. Um, I got into family medicine research over 20 years ago here at the University of Michigan when a group of us decided we really wanted to do research in integrative medicine. 20 years ago, there was hardly any research. Now there's a lot. And that was really spearheaded by uh, primarily family medicine researchers and public health researchers, of which our group was one. And it was a, a very exciting time to get involved in that. And we actually got a center grant, one of the first ones from the National Institute of Health. And that launched my career with family medicine and looking at integrative medicine research, primarily for me, integrative oncology research, um, where I do clinical trials, looking at self-care activities with acupressure, whole food diets, and botanicals, um, where I've looked at chronic fatigue and co-occurring symptoms like sleep disorder, um, chronic pain, and mood disorders in cancer survivors and how they can actually help themselves. And I'm also doing implementation science now where we look at how we can actually get these treatments into healthcare systems and the community, which is also super exciting. Um, and my clinic life, well, I actually don't have a clinical practice. Um, I've been trained as a naturopathic physician. And so we really don't have a way for naturopaths to um, practice right now at the University of Michigan. However, I do teach in our Integrative Family Medicine Fellowship Program, and I will also teach about some nutrition topics and integrative medicine topics to our fellows. Um, and I can just end by saying uh, love research, love family medicine research, and uh, hope that you're inspired to contribute to it.